Michael Crummy, Adam Dickinson, Sarah Peters. These poets recently launched their new collections at the annual Anansi Poetry Bash. Their names may be familiar to the full crowd at the event, but less so to the general public. It's no wonder because poetry has always been regarded as a cultural niche. As long as I've been involved in the poetry world, they've been talking about it being marginalized and not part of the larger culture and having a smaller and smaller audience. And to a certain extent, I think that's true. Uh, although I prefer to think of it as the, like, the where people are getting their poetry is changing. You know, like my parents, poetry was not part of their lives growing up, but they got it, they were churchgoers and they got it through hymns, you know, or through country songs. And I think people today are finding it in different places. And this particular poem is for all of you who are now or have been at some point in your lives partnered up and living in a house with children. It's called Getting the Marriage into Bed. Unplug the insatiable telephone, the apocalypse unfolding hourly on the network news crawl. Ignore the kitchen's Victorian factory of filthy dishes, the laundry pile suffocating a lost child in the basement. Ignore the lost children. Forget music and saffron and oysters. Put aside the cliched, the quaint rituals of wine and lingerie. Aphrodisiacs are for amateurs with more time than common sense who've yet to learn bliss is stolen from the world in small, piercing slivers. The mission of the League of Canadian Poets, founded in 1966, is to promote poetry to the Canadian public. It's not always easy because I feel that people have sometimes a sort of preconceived notions of poetry and that it maybe it's difficult and maybe that there might be some intimidation. So actually through National Poetry Month what we do is we try to break that apart and just make people see that poetry is actually very accessible and it speaks to all of us in in a really powerful way because I feel everybody can relate it's when poets describe something in a in a poem it's a universal experience but this babysitter she'd start with Goldilocks then Veer Papa Bear said someone has been eating my porridge and Goldilocks said my life is broken my heart is over snap my neck like a broccoli stalk I'm inconsistent, I don't, I write very slowly, I write terrible first drafts, um, and it's a, very, it's a very anxious, fraught, bewildering process, so it feels like not a process at all. I do think that uh, writing poetry is way more meditative than writing fiction. For me, writing fiction is like digging a ditch, you know, it's like, it's heavy lifting. Uh, and it's also something I can decide to do. I can wake up in the morning and decide, today I'm going to work on a novel or a short story. With poetry, I have, it has to be present it, when I wake up. I have to feel like there's something there for me to work on. I see, it, um, I see it as a form of investigation, of unconventional investigation in language and culture. I think poetry, its job is to, is to live at the limits of language and perform experiments there as a way of shifting perspectives and shifting frames of signification when it comes to thinking about questions of culture. I think, I think it's exactly that, um, being able to um, to pack a lot into a small space, which a lot of people find attractive about it. Um, in terms of why people choose to read it, I have no idea. I think people are so often forced to read it, and that's a shame. I do think that there's a tendency in schools to think that if you're presenting it in schools, then you have to teach something, you know, and that therefore there has to be some kind of uh, lesson at the heart. So what is this poem about becomes the question. And a lot of times a poem is not about anything in particular or nothing that you can define. It'll always be easier to culture mediums than to think autonomous products of the unconscious. The wind informs the wing and the coffee mug the hand. Goodbye and thank you for having me. Goodbye and thank you for having me.